outlook on relationship. <laughs> um, I deal. It's the reason that I don't like doing premarital counseling. I've actually heard people say, hey, tell me what you believe that your fiance say is bringing negatively into the relationship they need to work on. And I've heard people say, they have nothing negative. They are perfect. I think, oh, Jesus, be with them when that bubble pops. Isn't that right? Either that or if love is blind, keep them blind. Isn't that right? Because love does cover a multitude of sins, doesn't it? Yes. Because what bothers me is when people then have an ordeal, something negative happens in their relationship. And then, unfortunately, they want a new deal. And that new deal has got to grow our hearts. Amen? Got to grow our hearts out. So, we're aiming towards being on the incline. Isn't that right? Yeah. I, I don't want to live in the recliner of life. I don't want to live in the sick bed of decline. I want to replant every issue in a fresh way. And just, it's, it's by the way, the same truth that the seven letters, the seven churches was dealing with. And that is, they had an aspect that they were good in, but they had another aspect of their life that they were failing in. And they needed to replant it. Come on. Yeah. It's the same issue. And by the way, just like we can let our relationship with our spouse slip into some kind of recline, you can let your relationship with the Lord slip into recline. Yeah. We're pretty soon somebody like Mike or Sean or others, when they're leading us in worship, we're thinking about Burger King hamburgers rather than the goodness of the Lord. Come on. Yes. I want to replant my heart fresh and responsive before the Lord. It's how I desire to live. You too? So, number eight, thank you. I almost went to number nine. And yet number eight's one of my favorites. I hate it. But, you know, anyway, I did wrong. How do you deal with your wrongs? You know, some people just, they own up to it. They did something wrong. They own up. There's a graciousness about them. When they approach life, you know, they, they, you know, when they're owning up, let me tell you what owning up is and what owning up isn't. So, you did something wrong. Owning up has a sincerity to it. Because you can say, I'm sorry. From the depths of your heart, I have sorrow over my over the way I talk to you, I have sorrow over the way I've neglected you. I have sorrow over the way I was offensive to you. I'm sorry. But you can use the same words that basically say shut up yeah. and get on with it. Yeah. Let, me, let me give you an example. I'm sorry. Which means shut up. Don't bring it up again. And then later on, you're thinking, I don't feel restored. Well, I said the words. It's your problem, not mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that sounds real repentant right there. Yeah. How's that work between you and God? Is that working well? Is that working for you? No, yeah, it doesn't work. There's something that in a, you know, when, when there's, a, I deal, unfortunately, on a regular basis with people that have had adulterous relationships. And they have to respect the pain that people get caused. So if you're dealing, Pastor, with a couple in your church and they come to you and there's been an affair that's gone on, it'd be easy to want to say, now you need to forgive and you need to get over this, which, by the way, is what's needed. But you're not respecting the depth of pain that that person was caused by the affairs. The scary part is a person can get stuck there. Yeah. And that's our worry for all of them, isn't it? In other words, they can get stuck in their pain. But there's a grief that happens when there's been that level of violation. But there's got to be a sincerity about the owning up to whatever it is. You know, the interesting part is people that I know some people, not you, 
So I'll talk about them. <laughs> I know some people, they never owned up to anything. And I think, why do they do that? Do they actually think that if they just don't own up to it that everybody's going to think they're perfect? Because everybody around them is thinking, you're done. Rather than, oh wow, I respect you. You, you own your stuff. You, yeah. you seem to know what you really do and you want to grow from it. Instead of putting on some plastic facade. Trying to look like God, but you don't have his image. You understand? Yes. So, you own up to it. I can't deny to my wife. The only time I can deny to her is when she uses the words never and always. Huh? Because then we can just chase that cat's tail forever. You know? And she says, you never, whatever. You know, fill, fill in the blank. Come on, you know what I'm talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah. Anyway, then I'll say never, really never. Well, I remember three years ago when I, you know. <laughs> or she'll say, oh, you always do this. Always. 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 How about last week when, you know, and, and, and because I'm a technical person, if she wants the argument to go nowhere, who's <laughs> never and always? Yeah. Uh, she ought to just entertain herself sometimes just by lobbing one of those words in there into the conversation. Yahweh's, you know, you never, you know. How many of you find that never, it never goes anywhere yeah. if you yeah. use never and always? Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Okay, do you guys find that true too? Because you didn't raise your hand. Right. <laughs> oh, you did? You did. Okay. Okay. I won't say you never do, though. <laughs> but, you know, never and always. But no. Benita has learned to state the manner in which I offend her in a very di direct way, in a non-abrasive way. And when she says it that way, a little palatable, come on, I'm able to hear it and see what I was doing wrong and make adjustments and vice versa. So when you own up, you're gracious, you are sincere, you make amends. You, in other words, you actually work to try and build a bridge that you burnt a little bit. You seek healing. It's all part of owning up. Come on, this is stuff we teach others we need to live out yeah. as well. Yeah. You agree? The, the middle of that, the, the recline, you can tell you're in the recliner. I'm dealing with wrongs. You can tell you're wanting to push the pause button because you want to see the end of Wonder Woman. All right? It's when you just decide to blame. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a good blamer because I'm a technical person. How many of you are pretty good at blaming, too? Huh? Yeah, not half of you. Anyway, I actually did a word study on blame in the Bible. Have you ever done a study on blame? It's fascinating. Because I think we, we get it genetically from my great, 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 great grandfather Adam. Who was the king of blame. God confronts him and in one statement he blames two people. I thought, dude, he is the best. He's the master. It's that woman you gave me. <coughs> I think well, which fault is it? No, it's both of them. It was her fault. It's your fault for doing it. Does it get him anywhere? Listen, this is a useless question because the water's already under the bridge. But how would it have been different with Adam? If he had said, Lord, I did. Is there a way you can restore me? Now, God had the restoration plan. We see the bloodline of the cross, and even in the sacrifice that God did, that became, the blood sacrifice that became the garments that Adam and Eve wore. Huh? Beautiful. When you look at that, I think we'd call it the scarlet thread that goes all the way into the New Testament. But 
when you look at that, the blame didn't stop there. It just spreads like a cancer. Eve, Eve blamed something. What did Eve blame? She blamed the serpent. And the serpent didn't have a leg to stand on. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Blame has cousins. By the way, this is not good. Do you know that? It's not good when I do something wrong and I blame my wife. It's not good when she does something wrong and she blames me. It's got to stop. Yeah. You, you want a good, healthy, <clears throat> loving, resolvable relationship? You stop blaming and start owning your spirit. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Mm -hmm. There's other things, though. Huh? Mm -hmm. And that is, she can tell me that I've been hurting her, and I just deny it. Yeah. No, yeah. no, I haven't. Yeah. Uh, oh, that helps. Mm -hmm. How's that help? Record them if it does. Huh? Turn it over to them. You know, no. It, uh, how many of you tried to deny it? Yeah. You, you, know, you only think I was making fun of your mother. Uh, no, I was really lifting her up. You know, you know we, yeah. Just, yeah. we just, we just, we just deny. Or how about this? Rationalize. Mm -hmm. Benita, you, you might think that I was belittling you or putting you down or being hurtful. I'm just trying to grow you in the Lord. <laughs> grow you in the Lord. If you'd only listen to me. Oh, stop throwing that in there. That wasn't your effort at all. You're trying to beat them up a little bit. Come on. No. I read somewhere. You have to. Woe to him who calls good bad. Mm. And bad good. Mm. That's rash that's what rationalization is. Mm. Huh? I don't want to rationalize. In fact, I find it near impossible to rationalize my sin before God. Mm. Come on. Mm. Well, why would I do it before a human being? You understand you understand. Yeah. Yeah. No, let's live with integrity. And what integrity means is the metal that you see mm. is the same metal throughout the mix. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. It's the whole deal. So we can blame, we can deny, we can rationalize. How about minimize? You ever tried that? I tried that one too. And that is, she's she's crying. It should say min, minimize. Minimize. Minimize would be uh, Benita. You're crying about it. Wasn't that big of a deal? <laughs> Oh, that works. Yeah, it really works well. <laughs> now, come on. It doesn't work. But uh, I hate to tell you all the stink that I've done. But you're a fun crowd. She was crying over something. I remember thinking, really? It was so humorous to me, I started laughing. That did not go over well. I had to learn to bite the inside my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> it's hard to maximize it. Yeah. If I offended her, she offended me. Can you imagine her saying, Oh dear God, I need to get on my knees right now and repent for how I've treated you, Robbie. I think I'm right. <laughs> you know, come on. You can try it. It, that you can't over maximize it. I mean, unless they just think you're being sarcastic. Yeah. Like I am right now. <laughs> Rationalize, deny. If you are living those things out, you're in the recliner. You need to plant your life again. You wouldn't do that if you were dating, trying to win one another over. Come on. Well, come back to your first love relationship. Amen. It can get worse. Do you believe it can get worse? <clears throat> I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to call it passive aggressive. Let me tell you a story. Now, do, do you guys have women in your church that 
They're just the most faithful women in the world. They never say a thing wrong. They're always praising the Lord. Do any of you, can you picture somebody in the church like that? You can. All right. Two of you can. Three of you. Come on. Okay. I'm going to call her Julie. She always sat right there. But this is not, don't think that she's like Julie. But, uh, but happy like you. Oh, praise the Lord, Brother Robbie. God is so good. Consistent, consistent, consistent. Always early to church. Don't you like those kind of people? Yeah. They come early. They got the glue about them. The, the, they just kind of hang around people. People want to come to church just because they know Julie. All right? You understand the yeah, time? Yeah. And you're preaching. They're in the Word. They're taking notes. You present. Presume they're not writing notes to their friends, but they're actually taking notes in their Bible. You presume they're not tabulating. You know, I mean, something that they're actually taking notes. Oh, Brother Robbie, that was such a good word. I like people like that. Way better than the ones who just told me I was preaching the milk. All right? Anyway, I thought milk. I tried stirring it enough to coagulate it or something. You know? Anyway, so she comes up to me and she said, Pastor Robbie, would you counsel me and my spouse? By the way, I tell you this story with permission, all right? She said, would you mind if I, me and my husband, come in for counseling? I said, sure. Do you want to give me a little heads up on what's about? Oh, no. It's it's best to come out right there in front of him. But come out in front of him. <laughs> this isn't going to be good. This isn't going to be good. I'm not even certified yet. <laughs> this stuff's over my head. Anyway, so they come in, and this guy just a he's just a man's man, you know, truck driver, short haul, yeah. hard working man, just a really I enjoy I enjoy him to this day. I see him once in a while, one of the ch churches I minister in. So they come in and I said, uh, you know, I looked at him, I said, hey, tell me why you guys are here. He said, I don't have a clue. He did not have a clue, nor did I. And we both get more than a clue. So I said, Julie, tell, tell us what's going on. She said, well, I'd be glad to. She said, I want you to know, Pastor Robbie, I'm a good wife. By the way, that didn't surprise me. It's self-assessing, but it didn't surprise me. Because she, she was, you know, she's one of those, come on. Those neat ladies sitting right there, you know, right there in church, just swing like you are, you know. She said, I'm a good, I'm a good wife. Julie, I bet you are, I bet you are. But tell me, I know you're not here just to tell me that. She said, well, that is part of the story, though. She said, my husband's a hard-working man. Oh, well, I figured he was. Okay, so far, so good. Uh, it's about the turn. <laughs> Talking something about that. All right. She said, Pastor Rob, she said, I get up. She said, and I cook him a full breakfast before he goes to work. I thought, dude, that's kind of like Wonder Woman to me because I don't think my wife had fixed me oatmeal once until then, let alone a full course breakfast. I was just really impressed with her. Thought we should be videotaping her, her and say all women ought to be like this. You know, or so she said, I get up. She said, I, I fix him breakfast, but she said he likes his coffee percolated. Mm -hmm. Do you know what percolated coffee yes. is? They used to have these things, they called it a percolator. You'd set them on the stove and it would heat up the water in the bottom and then it, bloop, 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 and it bubbles up this tube. And it, we call it drip coffee now and charge you five dollars. You know, anyway, and, but it, he likes percolated coffee. She said, so before he gets to the, comes into the kitchen while he's getting dressed, she said, I, I'm percolating. It is coffee just the way he wants it. Say percolated. Percolated. Yeah, you got it. Percolated coffee. All right. Just in case you never hear it because they call it drip coffee now. You know. Anyway, she said, and I fluff his newspaper for him every morning. I didn't know what fluff a newspaper meant. And have you ever heard that term? <laughs> because a newspaper, at least in the States, comes and it's folded. And it's stuffed in a plastic yeah. sleeve so it doesn't get wet from the moisture of the morning, early yeah. in the morning, and she pulls that 
thing out before he reads it. Listen to this, women. You need to be doing this for your man. <laughs> she unfolds it. No joke. Oh my God. It is, it's kind of amazing. I thought, dude, so she shows me how you fluff a new newspaper. You fold it back the other way so that when he's ready to read his newspaper, drinking his percolated coffee. <laughs> she said that it, it's not it's not bucking back at him. All right. So, so I, I think I don't see a problem in the world, do you? Huh? This is all in the first 10 minutes, all right. So I said, well, this is lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. It's nice that you percolate his coffee in a fluffy newspaper. She said, that's where the trouble begins. Carmel, I'm thinking, what problem could happen there? She said, he comes in and sits down. And I'm cooking his bacon and eggs. And she said, I, and I fix him some toast. He likes it well toasted. I know how he likes it. And she said, and I know his favorite jam. And I always make sure his favorite brand of jam is right there on the table. I'll even spread it for him. I'm still thinking, dude, this is like, wow. And again, my wife didn't even like cooking. And that's okay with me. It wasn't at first, but... I I, I, in the covenant she made with me, I didn't get her to say to have it to hold from this day forward and to cook for and yeah. get us every desire, man. You know, we left all those out. Okay. I didn't realize I had so many expectations and they were growing by the minute after meeting with Julie. So I said, well, what's the problem? She said, he sits down starts drinking his coffee and starts cussing at me. I thought, what a stupid man. Really? It was it okay that I said that? Was it okay? okay? I don't mean to be offensive, but I thought, that's kind, that's kind of dumb. Why would you cuss at somebody that's doing something so nice for you? And she kept doing it. Man, I would have spilled the coffee all over his lap. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Don't <laughs> get a rag out of the trash. Wipe you. Start with your face. <laughs> no fast aggression in me. <laughs> Is this okay? Yeah. It's okay. So, this is a true story, by the way. She said he starts cussing at me. Oh, my God. What's he say? She said he starts sipping on his percolated coffee and starts saying, it's too strong, it's too weak, it's too hot, it's too cold, it's too bitter, it's too... And, and I thought, oh, that's tough, that's tough. I felt bad for Julie. Wouldn't you have felt bad yeah, for Julie? Yeah. I thought, oh, my word, that poor girl. Because, again, I know how I would have I responded. And I, oh, Julie, I'm so sorry. And I didn't know what to say. What would you say to that? So I only knew to ask a question. I said, Julie, do you do anything that gets back at him? She said, yes. I said, what do you do? She said, while well, he's holding that fluff newspaper, drinking his percolated coffee, cussing at me, she said, I'm spitting in his food. Oh. She said, she said, you know, Pastor, she said, you know how people lay hands on other people when they're sick to recover? When I get a cold, I'm glad I have a cold. She said, because I can spit all the more on those eggs. She said, then I take them over. This is a true story, by the way. And she said, I take them over. Nigel. <laughs> Say, here's your eggs. I hope they're thoroughly cooked like you like, but still nice and moist. I mean, tell you, listen, true story. I look over. Hang on. I'll never get through it unless you pay attention. I look over at him. His eyes are bigger than his face. I said, did you know she was doing that? <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> then I said to her, 
Is that all you do? She said, No. No. <laughs> I said, what else do you do? She said, he likes me drawing his bath water. <laughs> By the way, I just want to say something parenthetically. Husbands, all of your wives' minds went to what she already could have done. <laughs> They're very creative. <laughs> said, what do you do to that bathwater? She said, oh, it's not that bad. She said, I just run the hot water almost out because he likes a hot bath. And she said, then when it's starting to turn cool, I put the plug in that bathtub and fill it up with lukewarm and cold water. I didn't know what to say. What do you, they don't train us on things like that. I looked over at him, I said, was it worth it? He said, Pastor, it'll never happen again. What do you know, he got cured of cussing at her all in one session. I like that. <laughs> now, I want to tell you something. In a group this size, in a group this size, there might be someone having their eggs spit in. But the likelihood is lower. All right? Yeah. In this group. It's lower. It's not non-existent. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you something. If you think you're getting away with treating her or him like a dog, you're not getting away with it. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. You are paying a price yes. that God does not intend you to pay. Yeah. Sometimes it's that he or she is not warm and loving to you. Sometimes it's not being greeted at the door. Sometimes it's being, have an egg spit in. Come on. And again, is that true for most in here? Oh no, but she's a pretty smart gal. I treat her real well. <laughs> I, I, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Well, I'm not teasing. Uh, Lord, where I have been passive aggressive, hear me? Yeah. God, wash my heart clean again for a restart. Yes. Yes. Lord, where I have been a denier, a blamer, and rationalizer, and minimizer, forgive me. Lord, that I begin to be real again. Yes. And Lord, I live in a way maybe that I don't need to repent as often. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. That I be consistently safe for my spouse to love. Yes. Amen. 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 Is that good stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's go on. How about intimacy? Intimacy. Now, in intimacy, you know, intimacy is more than sexuality. Do you know that? Yes. Uh, I mean, it incorporates sexuality. And of course, read the Song of Solomon. Do you yes. know that God de designed your body to have sex with your spouse? Yes. Uh, yes. But you don't need to be afraid of it. And yes. He knows what you look like. And, you know, he saw Adam and Eve in their nakedness and saw all that he had created and said it was good. It was good. Keep your body clean, ready to give away to one another and only one another. Amen. 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 But intimacy is bigger than that. And I know I don't need to talk to you a lot about sexuality, though I have a whole teaching if your pastor will ever invite me back. Oh, uh, I'd be oh yeah. Be oh, yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> She's enjoying this. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you're in for a good season. Because <laughs> she likes you. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, can you imagine somebody knowing you as well as your spouse, and yet they're willing to love you? That's right. Wow. 
Yeah. I'm so impressed with Benita. She knows, she hears me snore, hears me blow my nose, you know, walks in when I'm using the bathroom. <laughs> she loves me. Do you respect your spouse for the love that they have? Yes. Maybe renew it a little bit. Yes. Jesus renew the fountain of love. Because love is a choice and an action and feelings will follow. Do you hear me? Yes. You hear me? So I was thinking about intimacy. And intimacy is where we can share our joys and our sorrows with one another. Let me give you a scripture on that. Share. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 15. It says this. Weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. Now, if we had lots of time, here's what I do. I take a quick eight, quick eight minute break, which we're not gonna take this morning. Is that okay with you? Yeah. And I'd say to you, hey, write down on a piece of paper, do this for a date. Why don't you guys do it tonight on your way home or something? Or how about wait till Monday and make up for the intense day tomorrow? What about life? What about life? Makes you mad, sad, worried, and glad. And just do, you know, a couple bullet points under each one. It didn't take me long to fill that in. I always have something that's making me mad, sad, worried, and glad. Come on. How many of you would have things to put under that? Yeah. Yeah. You would know about two-thirds of you. The rest of you are self-unaware. Until right. <laughs> you explode or something. <laughs> you don't have to. You can share. Listen. I want to tell you the science. You don't need to hear the science. God has already desired that he's given us a help me. That we can, we can pray. I can have an immediate two or more agreeing because I'm married. Well, do you understand? Did you catch what I just said? I can have an immediate two or more where there's two or more gathering. He's, he's in our midst. If we agree on any one thing, he'll do it that the Father be glorified in the Son. Because my wife loves the Lord and I love the Lord regardless of what you think of me after exposing my ugly stories. Come on. Yes. It is that I love him. So we can always agree together. We have an intimacy, even spiritually. You understand? Yeah. Did you know that's possible? Yeah. It's designed by God. Your preaching will even improve if you get it. Come on. You'll feel stronger and more confident. But, Romans 12, 15. When I begin to share, you know, we, thank you. It's gone way too fast. Weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. When I begin to share those things, something happens between me and her. Because I've trusted something to her. By the way, when your spouse trusts you with something, don't you ever use it as a weapon against them. Do you hear me? Don't you ever. And if you have, don't ever do it again. And, and if you have, Say to your spouse, I'm sorry, and it'll never happen again. I'm making that an enemy. I will never share, even when I'm froth and mad, you know, whatever that means. You know, but even if I'm mad at you, I will not share what I know about you. I will not use it as a weapon against you. Come on. Okay. So Benita and I fulfill that scripture by something as simple as saying this. Hey. I'm driving, maybe I'm driving out to Orange County from where I live. That's an hour's drive. And I'll say to her, I'm going to be praying for you the whole time along the freeway, honey. What can I pray about? So that lets her share her sorrows with me. Or her joys. I'll say, baby, what you've been doing that I can celebrate. Now, that girl lives and breathes orphanages in Cambodia. I mentioned that the other night. She loves to tell me how she bought a plate at a garage sale. Oh, Robbie, I found this plate for 35 cents. I already sold it same day online for 
because she knew what she spotted. I said, do you feel guilty that you robbed that poor little grandma that didn't know what that was? She said, no, it's feeding hungry kids. It's a provision of the Lord. Okay, okay, okay. I would have felt bad, though. Give her a dollar at least. <laughs> Release my conscience or something, you know. So, we share, we celebrate. Come on. We share. And we, we pray for one another. So weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. The, here's the science behind it. A group of brilliant doctor researchers came out of another test. If you know Dr. Sundar Cook, he's kind of pretty renowned. Jerry Cook, if you've ever heard of Jerry and Barbara Cook, that's their son, a doctor. Wonderful, brilliant doctor researcher. And he and a team of researchers just three years ago, they used a standardized group of monkeys. I'm going to act like it was one though, okay? And they put a monkey in the cage. And I know we're not all a bunch of monkeys, but we can learn something from animals sometimes. And they put this monkey in the cage and they exposed it to all sorts of hideous loud noises. Cars crashing, pans slamming together, people screaming, all that kind of thing. And then they measured, they took a blood draw and they measured cortisol, the cortisol level in the monkey, which indicates pain or fear. By the way, it does the same thing in human beings. Okay. Then, now they really changed the monkeys. They put a standardized monkey in there again that had not been pre-exposed to all this. But I'll say it simply. They left the monkey in there. They put another, the monkey's buddy in with it. Exposed it to the same noises that were hideous and frightening. Measured the cortisol level came back half. Half. That's real, man. Mm -hmm. Who's the monkey in your cage? Who you letting into your life? Mm -hmm. Who you letting in? I want to let my trustworthy spouse in my life. You understand? Wow. And she lets me in hers. That's right. Our pain is cutting half out of care. Mm -hmm. Listen, I try and make my body work as good as I can. But I've had a couple very extensive neurological surgeries. It left me like this. Okay. Thank you. That was a good time chuckle. Three years ago, they cut the back of three vertebrae off, had to lift them out because of some, uh, a, a very serious issue with stenosis in my spine. And the doctor said, Rob, you could kick a curb and become paralyzed immediately. It's that bad. He said how you live every day defies what you know is going on in your body. Mm -hmm. Then they had to fracture three vertebrae, put little titanium plates. I tease with the TSA coming through when they're x-raying my neck. You know, when you stand like this and that thing waves around you. So don't be afraid to see the three little things. It's nothing explosive, you know. Anyway, so, okay. I have been in such pain that any sensible pain management wouldn't work. I've had over 138 injections in my back. One time I passed out during one of those, but been through a whole bunch. One night I woke up two in the morning and I, I was so sick with nausea just from because of being in so much pain, I was just nauseated. I didn't know what to do. I'd sit up in bed, I'd stand, I'd walk around, everything hurt. Everything hurt. And in my mind, I always think if I change positions again, something must help. Finally, I woke Benita. I said, baby, would you just put your hand on my neck? I didn't even ask her pretty. Would you just put your hand right on my neck where it hurts? And I'd have spasms that'd be as big as a big as an egg. She put her hand there. She went back to sleep. So did I. And that's something. I let her in my pain. Her touch. The touch of somebody who cared and loved. See, I put a monkey in my cage. I'm not calling her a monkey. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. You know but I let her in my life. <coughs> Some of you need to let your spouse see a little bit. Mm -hmm. By the way, even sex will get better. Did you catch that? Yeah. If you yeah. let them in your heart. Because mm -hmm. your sexuality is connected to your heart. Mm -hmm. Connected to your mind as well. Okay. So, how many minutes do I have, Pastor? Five. 
So here's what we do. Are you getting something out of this? Yes. So we then flip this over. Let's say on a napkin, we wrote maybe once a month we do it. What makes you mad, sad, word, and glad, and put a bunch of bullet points under it. Then we flip it over and we try and guess what our spouse put. Huh? huh? What did Benita put? It's bad, sad, word, and glad. I'm going, oh, Jesus, I should have listened more. I don't know any of these answers. I think I do. I go through life as if I do. I don't know. You know, I'll put 16 different answers, about four bullet points under each one of them, and we just thank God. She's such a gracious woman. Maybe I got two right. That's all right. Because sitting there while we're talking about them, I get to hear. Do you hear me? And she knows I'm listening. And she knows I care. And then she also listens to mine. How many of you say, that's pretty good stuff? That's good. Come on, raise your hand if you agree. Okay, commit to it. Pastor, I'm just going to finish this one. I didn't listen if it's okay with you. <clears throat> there are other people, they withhold themselves. They do not share their joys and sorrows with one another. And eventually, you want to talk about getting in decline. They do share their joys and sorrows, but they share them with others. Now, it's one thing if you're sharing a guy with another guy. And I have a couple very, very good guy friends. And you know what? That's good. And they pray for me. I pray for them. And we share stuff. They know my life. By the way, every one of those guys are praying for you right now. I send them little updates through the time. Hey, they're getting a little cold with me. They think they're mad at me. Better pray. No, I'm too, you know. <laughs> no I love you. They, they can tell. They said, you fall in love with those pastors in England, haven't you? You're going to do this again. Uh, no, it took him to get me on a plane to come over here. He made me pay my own way. I'm teasing anybody. I am teasing. He didn't make me. We prayed for God's permission. Isn't that right? Thank God for Craig that came with me. That's part of my provision. But let me tell you where problems start. Just want to be honest with you. When you start sharing your joys and sorrows with a person of the opposite sex, you want to hear the truth coming from an older guy who spends a lot of hours restoring people. Hey, you, you're fooling yourself. Stop lying to yourself if you think, oh, reason my husband had that affair is that she had bigger uh, twins than I did. You know, referring back to Song of Solomon thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, twin fawns. I was trying not to say something else. You know. <laughs> I just made it worse. <laughs> or the reason my wife was attracted to that man and ran out with him is he has a six pack compared to my dagger. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, that isn't it. Yeah. I've seen some people go out with ugly and have affairs with them. I mean ugly. I mean ugly. <laughs> like they were beat ugly. I mean, I mean, you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, I, and did you ever think, well, why would she have an affair with ugly? Or why would he have an affair with ugly? You know why? She listened. He listened. Hey, listen, do you think she really wants to be home changing diapers all day? She'd like you to care about it. And she'd like to be able to talk to you about her day, even though it doesn't sound as important as your day. You understand what I'm saying? Or yeah. vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Listen, I want to give myself over to being the best listener my wife has ever had. And her to me. Now, I figured out something. What's your name again? Saman. 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 Yeah. I like you. You're enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. He listens carefully too. Huh? He's a good example of that. I want to listen to my wife. She doesn't always want to be fixed. She thinks listening is the goal. Huh? Yeah. She's told me what she told me one night. How obnoxious of her. 
she told me, I don't want three points, Robbie. <laughs> I just want you to care. And then one day, I wasn't feeling very well and I was complaining to her, and she started giving me the fix. <laughs> you need to drink more vitamin C. Have you thought of taking that bill? You gotta call the doctor. Benita, I just wanted you to care. She knew I wasn't mocking her. I meant it. I felt it. I just wanted her to care. Hey, listen, I believe every one of us hold the potential of being the best caregiver as possible. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, Lord, return our share. And by the way, I didn't quite finish this. It's probably okay with you. But 80% of the affairs start because of this stuff. Yes. 80%, not because of some physical attraction. 80% start because, you know, the, I don't know, I, I don't know what to call it, DHL driver. Do you guys have DHL over here? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. The DHL driver going to the Bentley Corporation. Huh? Don't they make Bentleys here? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 I know they're not made in the United States because they're too nice of a car. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny. <laughs> anyway, you know, but you go delivering packages and hey, that little receptionist, she says, Oh, how's your day? Mm -hmm. That guy's thinking, I haven't been asked how my day is in weeks. Yeah. Or him asking, Hey, how's your day? Oh, that, hey, you smell good. She's thinking, My husband hasn't even noticed that I have perfume on. Mm -hmm. She's thinking, Wow, he responds. No, God. Take the calluses from our lives Amen. where we have not noticed mm -hmm. and valued our spouse and let them get the best cookies we have to offer. Mm -hmm. right. Amen.